Hey there, it's Brie, and these are my favorite series from 2021. So actually, in honor of this video, I am actually wearing a shirt that is part of one of my favorite series. The series is not featured in this video because I didn't read the majority of the books last year, but that is Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. So um, Kennedy Ryan has a merch store and I went a little crazy in it and this was one of the shirts that I got. I love to get like long sleeve shirts like oversized and that's what I did with this one. So I'm all nice and cozy while I film this video. All right, anyway, let's talk about my favorite series that I read in 2021. So my requirements for books on this list was number one, that they had to be books obviously that I read in 2021 and that I read the majority of the series in 2021. I didn't necessarily have to read all of the books in the series in 2021, but the majority of them I had to read last year. And also that I read most of the books in the series, not necessarily all of them. And obviously that they're favorites. So a lot of the books that I'm choosing to hold up right now are my favorite books from the series. Most of them, if I own a physical copy of it, I will hold up my favorite book. If I put a cover up here, it'll either be the first book or my favorite book in the series. If I have a clear favorite book in the series, I will let you know which one. So this very first one is the VIP series by Kristen Callahan. This is a series that has been on my TBR for flippin' ever, and I kept putting it off. This is, in particular, this is the second book. This book specifically has been recommended to me over and over and over again. I finally read the series because SD gifted me the physical copies of the series, and I knew that the newest book is coming out. I had not read, I ha still haven't read the last book in the series, but I did read the first three books in the series last year, and I loved it so much. The first book, I feel like you may have to push through a little bit. It is a rock star romance. So if you don't like rock star romances, like I get it, but I feel like even the first book, even though the first book is more rock star romancy than the other books, I feel like it was still really good because that's a neighbor romance. But it follows this band and it follows it follows the members of the band. And then this hero in this one is actually their manager. And this one especially I loved so much because the hero in this one, he has anxiety and the heroine becomes like his safe person. <laughs> And I just love that so much because as someone with anxiety, I know how sacred our safe people and our safe spaces are. And that just like was the sweetest thing of my life. But this whole series was so much fun to read. It's definitely a marathonable series. So please be prepared to read every single book there is if you start the series. <laughs> the next series that I absolutely loved last year, I feel like I have to give credit where credit is due. And that is to my father because he loves Megan Quinn and he loves this series. And the series is the Brentwood Boys series by Megan Quinn. All of these books can be read completely out of order because I read them all out of order and I did not feel lost at all. I, they are loosely connected and you do see the other characters in the background, but it's not so significant that you're like, man, I wish I read their books first. Like I did not feel that way at all. The first book that I read, I believe was The Change Up. I think The Change Up is probably my favorite in the series. So I do recommend starting with that one. That one is a friends to lovers romance and it's a roommate romance. Like they become roommates after they've been friends for, for a long time. They're childhood friends to lovers, but this one is really, really good too. Honestly, I have loved all of the books in the series. This one, I I think, oh, I don't know. Is the change up my favorite? This one might be my favorite. I think the change up and this one are my two favorites. This one, mainly because the heroine is a freaking badass. She's like a high powered businesswoman. And then the hero is a, to I wish I had the sticker with me. Oh, I do. The hero is, I, I just made the sticker and this hero is like perfect for the sticker. It says cinnamon roll in the streets. And then when you flip it over, it says alpha in the sheets. That is what this hero is. I just freaking loved him so much. And he's in touch with like his feminine side and it's so good. I love loved both of the characters in this. It's hilarious. I also love the change up. Honestly, I loved every book I read so far in this series. I have not finished this series yet, but please believe I will very soon because this one again is a very marathonable series. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this is a sports romance. They're like all part of the same baseball team. The next series on this list, I think there actually is only two books in the series so far. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know if there will be more, but the book that I'm going to hold up is my favorite book in the series, but it is the second book and you can read them out of order. It is the Mist series by Regine Abel. This book is The Nightmare. The first book is The Mist. Such a unique story. I feel like Regine Abel just in general writes really unique stories, but this is probably one of the most unique romances that I've ever read, this book and the first book. The first book is a romance between a woman and the physical personification of like all of her fantasies and desires and dreams. Like he's a physical personification of that. In this one, he is the physical personification of her nightmares and he's obsessed with her. Like, 
How amazing is that? It's done so well. It's such a cool premise and it's done really, really well. Such an interesting series. And then of course, I obviously had to include the Prime Mating Agency series by Regine Abel as well. This is the only author that shows up on this list twice because I definitely, like as soon as I discovered Regine Abel, I was like, read all of the books. <laughs> so this was a series that I like has a special place in my heart because I buddy read all of the books. It's mostly like Shay and Steph and I who read the most of them, but our buddy group read I Married a Lizard Man, which is the first book in the series. You can read these out of order. The second book is I Married a Naga, and this one is I Married a Birdman. All of them are Marriage of Convenience with aliens, like very weird looking aliens, and it's so, so good. And they're short too, like they go by really fast. And I think, I think this book is my favorite in the series. If I had to choose a favorite out of all of these series, it would hands down be this series. And that is the Stolen by an Alien series by Amanda Milo. This is just a little novella that's part of the series, but can be read on its own. This is The Alien Nanny for Christmas. It's a little like novella within that series. But I do recommend reading that series, re reading Stolen by Alien first and kind of going in order. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I've read... I think six or seven books in that series so far. I've read all of the books that are available on audiobook in that series because the second that I read the first book in this series, Stolen by Alien, I immediately, immediately downloaded every single audiobook that Amanda Milo had, which is most of the Stolen by Alien series. And I believe she's working on getting the rest of the books in the series on audio. So I think I'm going to hold off until they're available on audio. The audiobooks are amazing. She has an amazing audiobook narrator. His name is Nick Cracknell. He is fantastic. He narrates the audiobook for this one too. I can't even tell you guys, he is probably my favorite male narrator that there is. Like, hands down, so good. He's so good with accents and humor, and it's just so good. This whole series is hilarious, but her books have heavy topics that she tackles in them, and they don't feel like weird romances. They're just so good. So the whole premise kind of behind this whole series, not necessarily this one, but more the other ones, is you have a bunch of humans that were kidnapped from Earth, and they are being put up for auction, and then for different reasons, different aliens are purchasing them, whether it's to save them or whatever the case may be, but it's so freaking good. There are so many different tropes throughout this and they're just done with perfection and it's so hilarious like hilarious and I've never felt the way I never felt this way about alien romances and I never thought that I could but just like the butterflies that they give me and the obsessiveness that I have over these books I can't even this is like if I had to pick a number one favorite out of all of these it's the Stolen by Alien series by Amanda Milo next on this list is the Hades and Persephone series by Scarlett St. Clair so I feel a little bit like I'm cheating because by adding this because I really only read the first two books in this series. Did I read the third book? Hold on. I can't remember if I read the third book. I marathoned this series, so I knew I had to put the series on here, but I can't remember if I read all of the books in this series or not. Hold on. So this is a book that I saw a lot of people really liking. I also feel like quite a few of my friends didn't end up liking this series, so I was a little bit hesitant going into it. So the first book is A Touch of Darkness, and oh my gosh, the covers of these books are stunning. I love Hades and Persephone retellings, but I am absolutely obsessed with this one. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I really really liked this retelling. This was one of my favorite Hades and Persephone retellings. Yeah, so there's four books in the series, and the first book is A Touch of Darkness. The second one is A Touch of Ruin. I've only read the two books in this series, but I do plan on reading more. The next one is A Touch of Malice, and the last one is A Touch of Chaos. Here's my only complaint about this is that it follows Hades and Persephone throughout, but in the background, you have the other gods and goddesses, and in this world, the gods and goddesses are like celebrities, and you get a taste of them in the background and I kind of wish that we got their stories. I wish that this was a series that didn't just follow Hades and Persephone. I wish it followed like each book followed a different god or goddess but I still like A Touch of Ruin was so good. I, I was really hesitant going into A Touch of Ruin because I was like am I even going to care because sometimes in these books that follow the same couple I feel like a lot of times there are like contrived annoying reasons that the couple like get pulled apart or whatever. And I was like, is that what's gonna happen in this one? But I ended up freaking, like there were scenes in that second book that just like 
had me and I just I've loved it so much so far I will let you know what I think about the other books but so far absolutely loving the series one of my favorite that I read in 2021 next up is the series that for one reason or another I didn't read as soon as it came out which is surprising because it's a spin-off of another one of my favorite series and that is the all-in series by Helena Hunting this one is my favorite a secret for a secret because the hero is he's like a Captain America hero but he's like a goody two-shoes kind of and I just freaking love that about him um, but I've loved every book in the series like I said it's a spin-off of her pucked series so this is also another hockey romance it follows the first book follows um rookie who was in the pucked series so it's like the first book is his story all of them have great mute cutes and they all have great tropes in it this one like I said is my favorite but if you liked the puck series and you like rom-coms and you like sports romances you'll love the series next up is actually a duet that I read and absolutely loved and that is the torn and tied duet by Carrie and Cole so far <laughs> Torn and Tide are the only books that I've liked by Carrie and Cole, and that's because Carrie and Cole really likes her age gaps, and I don't love it all the time, and she really likes the more taboo age gaps. And I will say, the first book in the series, Torn, is a very intense age gap because he is like an uncle figure to the heroine from the time she's young. And I know like that may put you off of it, and that's fine, you don't have to read it. But as someone who does not like that, I don't like, I don't mind an age gap as long as there's no grooming involved. And I feel like anytime the person has known the other person since they were very young, that feels like grooming to me. But somehow it worked in that book and I wasn't put off by it at all. I loved their relationship, I think because the relationship changed throughout, so it didn't feel as skeevy. This book in particular, I I freaking loved this book because the heroine in this one was kidnapped and like held hostage and the hero is the one who finds her and rescues her. And so there's a lot of trauma and stuff. Obviously, Carrie and Cole books, very emotional and lots of trigger warnings for them, but I really, really liked this duet so, so much. Next up is the Love Sister series by Christina C. Jones. So this is another one where I've only read a handful of the books in the series, but I absolutely love them. They're shorter books. And I believe this is also a spinoff series from her, oh, I forget the name of the other series, but I'm kind of reading those two series um, simultaneously, but I have only read one book in the other series that this is a spinoff of. So I didn't add it on this list, but I have been loving Christina C. Jones. I have to give credit to Heather from Hea Booktubes because she's the reason why I picked up Christina C. Jones. I was doing a reading vlog reading some of her favorites and I ended up loving the first book and then I ended up reading the second book. A lot of Christina C. Jones's books are available I believe on Kindle Unlimited but also on my Hoopla so that's awesome. She has I love that she has audiobooks for her series and she always has great narrators for these books but these are like super quick fun reads and the humor. I feel like Christina C. Jones has some of the best humor in her books without being like slapstick over the top funny. They're just like funny naturally, I guess. And her characters have so much freaking chemistry with them. These are just contemporary romances that follow these sisters and they have a bunch of different tropes in them. I think my favorite one, my favorite one is maybe the second book in the series. I don't know. I can't, I, I don't even think I could tell you, but I just, I love the series so much. And I love the series that this is a spinoff of. Highly recommend Christina C. Jones if you haven't read her books yet. Now, Next up is Love Lines by Cara Bastone. These are two books that are Audible original books and they are like, what do they call it? They're, they're audiobooks that have like sound effects and everything. And I just like, it is one of the most immersive, best audiobook reading experiences I ever had reading these two books in the series. And I don't, I think they are going to be coming out on, um, as like eBooks and physical copies, but truly you have to listen to the audiobooks because it has like sound effects and stuff in the background and it's so immersive immersive and the stories were so good. I will tell you that it, you are left a little unsatisfied if you're a romance reader because there aren't really any steamy scenes at all in them. And I feel like the first one ends a little bit abruptly. Like I definitely wanted more. They're pretty short. I definitely wanted more, but that's only because I loved the books so freaking much. And the first one is super cute because I think the first one might be my favorite, but the first one's super cute because it's a, a romance between a heroine and then like a guy who's helping her with her computer over the phone. And it's like this conversation 
that they have with each other and that's what's turning into their romance. It's so freaking great. And then just the way it's acted out, like you feel like you're in New York with them. It's so great. And last but not least is the Ravenswood series by Talia Hibbert. I actually read the first book in the series a few years ago. I think I read it in like 2018 or 2019, but then I didn't pick up the rest of the books in the series until last year. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to read the rest of the books in the series. So freaking good. Talia Hibbert, like I believe these are indie published, if I remember correctly, or self-published, I can't remember. But if you love her Brown Sisters series and you are craving more, you need to read her Ravenswood series. It has some great representation in it. Every single book, I know that in one of them, I don't remember the name of it, but like one of the characters has pots, you have characters who have autism, you just have such a great wide range of characters and the steamy scenes are always amazing. It all it revolves around or takes place in this small town called Ravenswood. And I believe the first book, the heroine, she reads a lot of comic books and I think she's pretty famous for like maybe a blog that she does. I think she does almost like a webtoons kind of thing that she updates regularly and she's really famous for it. But she also is very, she doesn't like going out into the world. It gives, it's like too much stimulus for her because she has autism and she's very much, it's a grumpy sunshine and she is the grump and it's just so, so good. I think the thing that stands out most to me in her books, aside from the representation, are her steamy scenes. But if you love the Brown Sisters series and you're craving more, definitely check out Talia Hibbert's Ravenswood series. All right, guys, that's it. Those are my favorite series that I read in 2021. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you have some favorites or favorite series that you read in 2021. Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, happy reading.